What's up, everybody? Rob here. Thank you so much for tuning in. Should I drop out of college? Is college a good investment? This is a subject that is a deep chip on my shoulder. So I'm letting you know that beforehand. Now as an entrepreneur, looking back on it, I feel that I do have some insights and I wanted to share the way I analyze college today. Specifically, today, today, um, as in the present, it's going through the pandemic right now. I could only imagine, I could only, sorry, sorry to laugh a little bit, but it's like, I could only imagine if you were put into college as either the graduating class of 2020, which you're kind of lucky because you actually got a little bit of the experience and then you get kind of this weird graduation. But the worst is if you are just going into college or if you were planning to go into college and now you're like, well, if we're shut down like this, you can't really be social. So the networking aspect of college is kind of ruined. I can kind of sit at home and just do these webcasts from my house and go on these Zoom calls or whatever from my house. Um, is college necessary? So this video is even more relevant, and that's why I want to make this video right now to specifically the people who are on the fence about college at 17, 18 years old. And warning, if you're a parent that's very much so for college, this might not be the video for you, or this might be the video for you if you have put together like your life savings to put your child through college. Maybe, just maybe, this is a good idea what I'm about to talk about. Before I get further into things, I have to say that this is not to be taken as advice. This is just education based on my opinion and just giving my analyt my analysis of college as an entrepreneur in his late 20s. Just wanted to throw this video out there for you. And I hope it helps. If it does help, think about clicking that like button. Maybe wait till the end. And if you see the value in these videos, click the like button so it can reach out to more people. If you think the message is worth getting out there to the masses, if you click the like button, it helps with the YouTube algorithm and this video will show up higher on the list when you're searching for this topic on YouTube. So that really, really does help if you smash the like button. If you feel like subscribing, we'd love to have you as part of the community. If you click the bell afterwards, you will be notified of future videos. I don't like to make like filler videos or filler content. When you see the title, I'm going to be talking about that topic. I don't like wasting people's time. So after I just wasted three minutes of your time there, let's get into the topic. <laughs> okay. You as a 17, 18 year old in the world today, thinking about going to college, what I want you to understand is that this is a completely different day and age than your parents when they went to college or when they went to high school or even when I went to high school. The day and age is dramatically different. The technology is dramatically different. The kids that their parents, do you know how many kids were excellent video gamers and had been telling their parents, no, I'm, I'm really good at video games. You don't understand. Oh, shut up, Johnny. You don't know what you're talking about. You have to go to college. See, that's the sad thing is parents are living through their children. They're living through their children and they're imposing this duty on their children that they need to go to college, that, that they won't be supported otherwise. And what I would want a parent to do, or if I was a parent, um, support your kid. Let them make their own decisions. The time, and this is my most important point, but I think, let me finish that first thought though. That kid that got talked out of video games could have been Ninja. And if you know the e Sports world, Ninja is a guy that's worth tens of millions of dollars from video games, from streaming his video games. There are people that are multi, multi millionaires. Look at like the FaZe Clan guys. There are all kinds of extremely successful video gamers that incorporated it into social media, made their own merch, and became an entrepreneur through video games. This is a subject that 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 marketplace didn't exist 20, 30 years ago. You couldn't play video games like that they have out today. You couldn't stream the content live from your cell phone or your, or your computer. This is all new tech stuff. And the irony is that the kids can be the teachers for the adults that are the professors in college. I repeat that. 
the kids that are learning how to stream, how to how to build a, an audience on TikTok, how to use this YouTube platform. This is all self-taught here. This is what I'm doing. Whether I'm good or bad at it, I'm, I'm self-taught. I didn't go to college to teach myself how to shoot a YouTube video or how to make a YouTube set or how to do the lighting or how to make this mic work, which was a little bit of a chore to figure that out. But I, there's, there's tutorials out there and I wanted to learn it. But the point is, these new age things are topics that the children actually know much more about than the parents do. And we're talking about multi-billion dollar new marketplaces that are showing up on a daily basis, it seems like. Every, every time I look around the corner, there's some sort of new marketplace. TikTok wasn't even a thing. Now there's multimillionaires from TikTok. And I'm sure the, the people that were making these little dance clips or whatever were laughed at at the beginning. Who's laughing now? Are you laughing from your cubicle job at the kid that you were laughing at doing his little dance video that's now a multimillionaire from TikTok? Should he have taken that person's advice to go to college? Or should they have focused on what they were doing? I think that the, the youth doesn't get the credit that they deserve sometimes. And they do deserve a lot of the flack from entitlement and all these types of things. But when it comes down to tech and when it comes down to advancing towards different marketplaces and all these things, you got to give yourselves more credit when you're in that 15, 16, 17, 18. Sure, even these 13-year-olds are just killer at working these devices. These early, early teenagers, even younger than that, are running laps around the adults on these super phones. You got to remember, these iPhones, they came out in 2007, and they were nothing like this. I remember when I saved up all of my money, what was I? I got to say I was what, 12 or 13 at that time. Um, and I remember that first iPhone came out, and I saved up all my money, and I got it, and the camera was terrible. The video, I don't even think it had video on the first one. I think it was only camera. Um, and it just, so to see these three lensed, crazy supercomputers, I mean, this phone for $1,000, you might think $1,000 is a lot of money. That's nothing. The technology that you get in this phone is insanity. Absolute insanity. There were cameras that were $30,000, $20,000 cameras that weren't even as good as this one today, like 20 years ago. They were extremely expensive. Look at the prices of like TVs and stuff, how cheap those have gotten. I remember like a plasma screen TV was like two grand, three grand, four grand. And for a really nice one, it was like 10 grand. Now it's like 400 bucks, 300 bucks at Costco. It's crazy. But the tech is advancing so fast that how foolish would we be to read a textbook from 10 years ago that we paid $300 for on tech at that time? If you're reading an economics book from 1993, and it is now 2020, well, I guarantee you it's not very accurate. If you're reading a textbook from two years ago with the rate that technology is moving, you're two years behind. It's not, it's not even relevant. And we're paying like $300, $400 for these textbooks. You know what you should do? You know what you should do? You should buy yourself a nice iMac or a nice MacBook Pro, a nice camera, well, not a nice camera, I mean a nice iPhone, I meant to say, because there's already a super camera on the back of your iPhone. Matter of fact, my videos are shot on an iPhone. So if you're wondering why the quality is so good on my YouTube, it's shot on a second iPhone that I bought because I figured the iPhone camera was better than the other camera that I was going to buy. And so I got a second iPhone for it, for this specific set, and I just leave it there. That's how good the camera is on the iPhone. You can do anything with these. And then the third thing is high-speed internet. Make sure you have access to high-speed internet, and you have all the devices that you need, that, that's really what I think an 18-year-old needs today. You can study all the different things you want to do, and then you make your decision. But you want to know something funny? When you make that decision, and this is, the, is kind of like the second main point that I wanted to get on, and I know that these videos can sometimes be a bit of a tangent, but I hope that there's some gems sprinkled in here and there that make sense for you. At 17, 18 years old, we are lied to by the adults. We are lied to. I want to really say that. We are lied to in that we need to decide what we're going to do for the rest of our life when we're still a teenager. Parents should be ashamed of themselves. 
These teachers should be ashamed of themselves. Oh, you, you, Johnny, you know, you're 16 years old. You, you know, you want to, what you, do you know what you want to do for the rest of your life yet? You know where you want to go to college and take on a lot of debt and go there for four years and jam a bunch of information that you don't need in your head? Do you know, and then you're going to use that information to impress somebody with this golden ticket resume. And that's going to be, that's going to be what you do for the rest of your life, whatever you choose. So make that decision right now and make sure you're set up for a fallback. Make sure you have your fallback in place, your plan B. If it doesn't, if this one doesn't work out, make sure you have a fallback. These are all terrible lies. And I say that with passion because there were things that I was talked out of when I was young. I had started a YouTube channel back in 2007. Maybe one day I'll talk more in detail about it, about reviewing iPhone cases and stuff. And if I had stuck with that idea that I was talked out of, I, I couldn't even imagine where that would be now. If I was talked out of my current business that I'm in, which many people tried, including people in my own family. If I was talked out of, uh, I was crazy about Tesla electric cars in 2011, 2012, and 2013. Everybody thought I was foolish. Everybody thought that company was going bankrupt. It's often a contrarian that's rewarded. And my point of that, and I'm kind of going in different tangents. Sorry, I got the ADD thing. But going back to that topic, when you're young, when you are 17, 18, 16, 15, you should be actively pursuing failure. Nothing teaches you that a fire is hot more than burning yourself. If someone tells you, oh, that fire is hot, make sure you plan for water over there, plan for plan B, blah, blah, blah. No, you won't know exactly how hot that fire is if you don't burn yourself on it. And then after that, you go, okay, I understand what, I understand that's hot. But when you're young, that's when you should be making those foolish mistakes. You should fail 10 times before an idea succeeds at a minimum. Do you know how many times I failed over and over and over again? Do you know how many times a millionaire made it to 10 grand, lost it all, made it to 50 grand, lost it all, made it to 100 grand, lost it all, and then they made millions? They didn't focus on those losses. They saw them as an opportunity to learn and then not make that same mistake in the future. But if you think that you want to go down life in this dandy little road of perfect entitlement and you're not going to make any mistakes down this road, that is one of the most boring lives ever. That is one of the most boring lives ever. And it is an insult to push this on the children, to push this on the youth. You need to make your mind up right now what you want to do for the rest of your life. Right now. No, I don't even know. I don't know anything about life yet. I have no culture to me at 18, 17 years old. I have so many mistakes to make. I'm not ready to plan out the rest of my life at this age, but yet it's, it's imposed on you. And I remember when I dropped out of college, I did three years at community college, lined up, I believe I had 56 units done. And I only had four left to get my AA and then transfer to a four year. And at that very moment, I had a waiter job. And my waiter job, I was making like six to 8,000 a month. It was quite a good paying, well paying waiter job uh, in a fancy area. And I'm like, wait, if I'm making this much money cash a month, this is, uh, it doesn't make sense to go into debt. I'm dropping out and I want to be an entrepreneur. And I finally took that leap. But I remember the weight that was on me even after I had made that decision. It wasn't like a weight was lifted. It was like, oh, am I going to be, what am I going to do with my life now? Oh my gosh, society has told me I needed to stick with college. Oh my gosh. But you know what happened? I failed. I failed a lot. I failed multiple times over and over and over and over again. But did I ever want to go, oh man, did I, am I, I'm stoked that I had this fallback to go to. I'm stoked that I had this plan B. No, it was plan A every time. And when plan A failed, I tried plan A again. And when plan A failed, I tried it again and again and again over and over and over again. And I bet any successful entrepreneur that's watching this can resonate with that. If you think you're going to go at something and just be an instant overnight success at it, you're fooling yourself. You're going to fail. I think that a, a successful person is somebody that has mastered failure. Really? They just got better at failing. Because you are all going to make mistakes. Every single one of us does. So to put these insane ultimatums on these young kids... And then on top of it, what's even more evil is to put this ultimatum on a young kid 
a young, fragile kid, and then then give them a loan. I can't even get the kind of loans. I could show them millions of dollars in revenue, and I can't go to the bank and be like, hey, can I have a quarter million dollar loan at you know 0% interest until I graduate and this and that? They won't give me that loan, but they'll give you that loan because there's some weird law, this evil, evil law put into place that for some reason you can't get out of college debt. For some reason, college debt is the one debt that you can never bankrupt out of. You can never get out of it, period. Even after you are dead and gone, they will charge other people for this debt. That's how serious college debt is. And if you were a banker, wouldn't you be rubbing your hands together at that? Ooh, I know I'm going to have this person by ball and chain for the rest of their life. Uh, And then on top of it, we're going to accumulate interest on this unreasonable amount of money we've given this young, fragile kid. It's evil. It's criminal. We're talking about trillions of dollars, I believe, in student debt. And then what's even more criminal is after the entitled children that got these big debts given to them, they now feel so entitled. They're, oh, the world just gave me all of these free handouts. I feel so great. They get out of college and they expect other people to let to have these debt forgiveness programs. So then you're telling me, so the kid flipping cheeseburgers, the kid that was a waiter like me, who was busting their, their tail end, working super hard, that person is supposed to pick up your tab for you? That's the person, the people that are the entrepreneurs, the people that have been busting their back while you were chilling in college partying, or even if you were not partying, you were just studying every day and taking on that. That's an entitlement. That's a luxury to be able to sit in a college room and read textbooks. That's a luxury. You know how bad I want to just sit at home and read at times? But now nah, I got overhead to pay. I got bills to pay. I got a dream I'm working on. It's, it's, it's an entitlement to be able to sit there in a college. But when you get out of college and you have this huge pile of debt that was unreasonably given to you, justifiably so, it was like it, it's, you are justified in saying that this is an unreasonable sum of money that was trusted with you because it's literally evil. But to then say that people that saw through that and worked should pick up the tab for you and forgive your debt for you, that is the most backwards thing ever. The kid flipping cheeseburgers should pay your bill because you were entitled to go to college. That that's something that I will never I, I won't get over that. And the fact that that's even up for debate is just ridiculous. This guy, Dan Crenshaw, maybe I'll put a screenshot of it, talked about that. But another person that talks about college being a bit of a, a sham is Elon Musk. Elon Musk, I've always been a big fan of Elon Musk. And basically what he said, I'll, maybe I'll try to find the video and stick it in here. If not, maybe I'll put a link in the description down below. Um, Elon Musk talked about how college is basically just proving that you're good at doing chores, which is basically what it is. You want to get this fancy resume and prove to somebody that's a business owner to hire you because you've proven that you're good at doing chores. It's not like a testament of how high of an IQ you have or how creative you are. It's a testament to how long can you sit under fluorescent lights and jam information in your head and study for these tests. It's it's really um, become this crazy thing. But the main factor that I wanted to get into is that if I was going to just make like bulletin points, you should actively be, be pursuing failure while you're young. If there was a time to be trying a million things and failing at a million things, it would be when you're young. And if all of those things failed and you really just go, okay, I've tried entrepreneurship of every angle possible, which personally with me, I'd, I'd be homeless and dead on the street before I gave up at entrepreneurship. That's my mindset. It, it's plan A or nothing. Period. I, I don't have it in me to not continue to try at it. So it's hard for me to say that, but if you have exhausted all possible resources, you've done everything possible, maybe when you're 30, 35, that's the time to go to college. Maybe when you're 40, you want to go to college, but not when you're like a 17, 18 year old to be pressed on taking on all of this debt and all of these things. And I'm talking specifically to the entrepreneurs out there. I'll probably add entrepreneur in the title or something. I know that if you need to be a, you want to be a lawyer, you want to be a doctor, you want to be these things, which I find it evil how much college it, they require for, for those jobs. But the main reason I find it evil is not because it's a, it's a bad idea to spend that much time learning your craft when it's such an important craft like being a doctor, but that it's the debt that accumulates in that time period. You want to be a doctor and take eight years to go through college? It's not that 
eight, it's a bad thing to study for eight years. Of course, it's a great thing to study for eight years. But the debt that accumulates and then your tax rate as a doctor is ridiculous. So you are basically putting yourself in a ball and chain for the rest of your life by taking on these kinds of debts. Now, listen to that. What's his name? Um, uh, Ramsey. David Ramsey, right? Dave Ramsey. Every time you hear somebody that's in a bunch of debt, they're usually, you already know this, a college graduate. They're usually a college graduate, some doctor, some lawyer that was in college for a very long time. Yeah, I got $300,000 in student debt. We're paying off. And we got, it's like, where did you get that? Oh, college. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. You got it from that. Oh, you can't bankrupt out of it? There's no way out of it? Oh, yep, yep, probably for the college thing. It just seems like this extremely unfortunate thing in our modern time to be pressing on children that could be the next YouTube sensation, the next Instagram sensation, the next TikTok sensation, the next esports sensation like Ninja or one of those guys, you know. Let your kids make mistakes. Let them fail. I think that that's the biggest problem in today's day and age is we have these passionate children but that they're so entitled from being guided perfectly through life and being forced to make these decisions at young ages on what they're going to do for the rest of their life. Wouldn't it make more sense to just let them do what they want to do and have the freedom to make the mistakes, to pursue failure? Fail forward. That's a line Denzel Washington, I believe, says. You know, if you're going to fail, if I'm going to fail, I'm going to fail forward. I'm going to fail and I'm going to fall forward because of it. And I'm going to keep, and there's a lot of truth to that. Keep failing and keep falling forward. That's what the goal should be. Because you're not going to just be like, success. And I think that's the disappointing factor when people are graduating from college and they realize, wait, this, you're telling me this, this piece of paper isn't the golden ticket? Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. I thought this paper was the golden ticket. I thought I was going to get, you know, $200,000 a year job right from this piece of paper here. I graduated, you know. It's not. What you should be trying to do, if you want to make a quarter million dollars a year, pursue being valuable. There is no limit to that. If you want any job in the world, I'll tell you how to get any job in the world. And take this with a grain of salt or whatever, but... It really worked for me. I mean, this wasn't the greatest job in the world, but it opened a lot of doors for me. I found collectibles through being a waiter. I was a waiter for the right table, and that's how I got into the collectibles business. Maybe one day I'll talk about my history and my kind of story on how I got into precious metals, how I got into collectibles um, and being an entrepreneur. But the beginning aspect of it was being a waiter. And at the beginning, I was this, this fancy, in this fancy restaurant, and I started as a busboy. I was like a busboy food runner expo type thing. And I, when I finally got my foot in the door, I over delivered, I over delivered and I would work my, I would work so hard. I worked so hard. I know YouTube doesn't like when you curse. So I try not to curse, but I would say certain uh, derogatory words uh, about how hard I worked. <laughs> uh, but I worked super hard when I did that. And when the realization came that the waiters were making the most money, I told the boss, hey, I'll work for free for a whole month as a waiter. I'll work for free for a whole month. But if, and I won't, I won't even want any money. I'll work for free just to prove to you that I will be the best waiter in your restaurant. I literally said that. And he laughed at me at first. And the next day I said the same thing. I don't want any more money. I will work every single day for free. I just want to be able to be a waiter. Again, kind of pushed me off to the side. Again and again and again, I said the same line until he finally said, you know what? Fine. Fine. We'll try you out for three days, but I can't legally work you without get you getting paid. So I'll pay you minimum wage. You won't make any tips. You'll work with this other waiter here and you'll be his henchman. And then after that, I'll let you take a couple tables on your own. <laughs> That's how it worked. And when I finally got that opportunity, I over delivered. And I proved how valuable I was and that I was the best waiter there. And actually, I ended up becoming the highest revenue. Uh, I brought the most revenue of any waiter that that restaurant had. And that next, I think I was a waiter for about three and a half years. For those three years, I was the top, top revenue waiter. I would always outsell everybody. 
the point of that is being, I didn't focus on my resume. I didn't even have a resume when I got that job. But you want to know something funny? That waiter job, I was making like 90 grand a year at that job as a waiter. And that's a lot of money to make as a waiter. A lot more than a lot of college graduates make. Um, so I guess it was a pretty high paying job. But the point of that is that I didn't focus on a resume. I didn't even have a resume. I focused on once to get your foot in the door, be willing to work for free and prove that you're valuable. And then once you get your foot in the door, then over deliver and outperform everyone. So that when they finally look back on that decision they made to give you that foot in the door, they go, that guy really works hard. That guy really works hard. I don't want to, I don't want to lose that person. If I lost him, I'd, I'd lose a really good uh, worker. I'd lose a really good waiter in that situation. So if there is a certain job that you want and it's an entrepreneurship type thing where it's, or it's not a um, specific prerequisite where you need to have a pass the bar as a lawyer or you need to have your um, to get a doctorate or whatever, you know, if you wanted just a certain type of job, look at what Elon Musk says. He's like, you don't need a college degree to work for Tesla. We just want to know how valuable you are. That's exactly what Elon Musk has said in the past. They, they don't need a college degree for that. So rather than focusing on making this fancy document, and, and to be honest, now that I'm, I'm starting to interview some people to work for Mineral Exchange, and I want some people to help with the website and do all these other things, whenever I get somebody with a fancy resume, it's actually a big turnoff for me. Obviously, I have that big chip in my shoulder myself, but the truth is it's like, hey, I'm fancy, and I want to get paid fancy, and this is why I'm fancy. I'd rather get the kid that's homeless working out of his, out of like the back of his car at the coffee bean. <laughs> uh, there's Wi-Fi in every, every coffee shop. There's Wi-Fi in every coffee shop and you can, you can work from your phone. You can do, you, you, you can use whatever resources that you have available. There's one time in my life I was homeless and I used to work at a coffee shops on my phone. And I'd be making, messing around on social media and whatnot. But I would rather hire that dude. I'd rather hire that dude that's willing to outwork everyone and knows what it's like to not be entitled, not have certain things. That person, if, if that person can show you that they have a certain skill set, they'll not only work for less, but they'll outperform and outdeliver the person with the fancy prerequisites done. Um... It seems to me like nine times out of 10, it's like a, it's, there's so many hustlers out there in the world that'll just work their tail off. And they, if they're given the opportunity, so be that person of value that can go to a business owner and go, look, I know what you do. I've studied your business rather than studying for the exams or whatever in a college, study the business that you want to get into, become very good at that, do the job well, and then go to whatever business owner and go, Hey, I've studied every aspect of your business and I can really help you. I think that I'd be a really good fit at your company and I'm willing to work for free for months, maybe three months for free. But after the end of the three months, if you find me to be valuable, you have to give me a job and I want this salary. The business owner would be foolish to not let you try. They would be foolish to not let you try because they know they're going to get a free worker for three months. And, and the fact that you're willing to do that makes people look at you in a different way. Hey, man, I don't even have a resume. I don't even have a resume. To be honest, I haven't had any, any good jobs. Sorry. Let me turn that off. Sorry, I haven't had any good jobs. Um, and let me put my... Sorry, I've shut, put my phone on Wi-Fi. I'm not cutting that out. I don't like cutting my videos. But go to a business owner and say, I've never had any good jobs. I don't have a resume. I don't have anything fancy to show you, but I will tell you this. Nobody will outwork me. Nobody will outwork me. I'm a harder worker than anyone you have ever seen. And if you give me the opportunity, I'll prove that to you. And I'm willing to work for free to prove it. It's like, how foolish would you be to turn down that person? So that would be like my advice on, on trying to get a job. And if you want to be an entrepreneur, which is, what I'm trying to reach out this video to is the, I think specifically the people that I'm talking to, and I, I said this in the beginning of the video, I'm kind of talking to myself. If I could have talked to myself at 17, 18 years old, I would have said, jump off the cliff, man. 
jump off the cliff. Every successful person I know stood at the edge of a cliff, went, oh man, it's high. And my, and I had a parachute and they went, I'm jumping. And like, 10 times the parachute didn't open and they just got all bruised up and battered and they walked their way back up to the top of the mountain and they tried it again and they tried it again and they tried it again and eventually the parachute opened. It's like the number one thing with successful people is that they just kept trying and I liked what Denzel Washington said. I I believe it was Denzel Washington that said, fail forward. Just keep failing forward. You're going to fail, so fail forward and fail hard. When you fail, you fail, fail terribly. Make sure it's a terrible failure if you fail, because that means you actually gave it 100%. If you fail bad, you really tried. You went all in. You were pot committed. You know, you look at these skateboarders, you know, when they're committed, they make the trick happen. When they have that slightest bit of, ah, I don't know if I'm going to do that. You know, I skated my whole life growing up. I still skate, you know, surfers. If you're, if you're surfing, if you're snowboarding, if you're going to hit a jump on a snowboard and you see the person with the flailing arms, they weren't pot committed. They were worried about plan B, which is them crashing. They weren't focused on plan A and go, no, 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 I'm going to land this because the person that focuses, they usually get pretty close. And when they fall, they don't fall as hard. And I know a lot of, if there's skateboarders watching this or snowboarders or any type of action sport person, like, yeah, commitment is a big deal. And it's a big deal in business. It's a big deal in life. Get pot committed. If you want to do something, go for it all the way. You know, I could talk about stories about my starting of things, living in my warehouse, you know, sleeping in the back of my car prior to that, you know, having to, my, my phone getting turned off and I had to go to, I said, (laughs) going to coffee shops to use their internet to start things. Anything possible, any available resource was exhausted in the beginning, and I wasn't willing to accept no for an answer. Calling clients over and over and over again, hey, man, I, uh, I can sell this for you. I can sell this for you. I can sell this for you when I had no money in the accounts. You know, it's like the amount of failure that happened, <laughs> I don't even know if I could put a number on how many times I failed. I don't even know if I could. The amount of times I've hit... 10 grand, lost 10 grand, made 10 grand, lost 10 grand, made 100 grand, lost 100 grand, made 100 grand, lost 100 grand. So many times. So many times. But you know what? Eventually, through all those failures, on the hundredth time, if you're 99 failures, on the hundredth time, you might fail even again. And then at 101, something worked. Something worked at 101. And that's usually the story of most successful entrepreneurs. So the main point is just when you're young, don't let people fool you into saying you need to make some sort of brash decision on what to do with the rest of your life. Don't let somebody else live their life through you. Your parents, namely so, you know, they're all doing their children such a big injustice because they want to compete with the Joneses. Oh, well, my kid goes to Stanford. Oh, well, my kid goes to Harvard. You know, all of that happening. I would rather have the, to me, I like the story of, yeah, my kid looked at college and saw it as kind of a scam. You know, they're overcharging people. Do you know how many, how many people are in debt? You know, that college debt is, is one of the worst things that ever happened to this country, you know, to all the citizens and all the youth, all this college debt that we're entrapped in. The funny thing is, and this is the last point I wanted to talk about is all the tools are at your fingertips prior to 2007 when technology wasn't the way that it was, you know, we're talking about parents that think college is a good thing back from like the seventies, eighties, you know, sixties. Like, yeah, maybe back then, maybe back then your friends got ahead from the, of you because they went to college and learned things because there wasn't internet to learn from at the time. You'd have to go to a library and read books or whatever and, and learn information that way. That was, yeah, college was a good idea back then, but you want to know how I built this set? Do you want to know how I learned how to use this, my, my webcam connected to my computer, connected to this fancy microphone that I copied Joe Rogan's set mic? I literally looked up Joe Rogan's microphone and it had a video on it. I mean, the lighting, all this stuff, buying it from Amazon, this uh, Rode uh, podcaster or Rodecaster, you know, pro or whatever. All of this stuff, I taught myself. I taught myself how to make a website. I taught myself how to market on, on social medias for my business. All of these different things are self-taught because all the tools are there and at your disposal. There is no better time to be alive than today. Today is the day. If there's a time you wanted to try an idea that you've had in your mind, 
the best ideas I ever had were always the ones that people wanted to talk me out of or say I was foolish. Tesla, I remember wanting to invest in Tesla. I saw the first Tesla electric car in Santa Monica. It was one of the first plants where they were like, they were dispersing and the early adapters were there in Santa Monica. And I saw one of the Tesla electric cars drive by in 2011. And I'm like, man, that's a cool car. What was that? You know, and then 2012 came around. I saw another one, another one, another one. And it was that new Model S. And it looked a lot different. Now they have like the cool vents in the front and stuff. But that, back then the cars looked a little different. But when you saw one, you're like, that's different. What's a T logo on the back? What's that? And I looked more into it. And that's when I first looked into Elon Musk before he had millions and millions of followers and whatnot. And I was captivated by it. And I remember my, the best investment I ever made was investing in Tesla electric cars. That was the best investment I ever made. And if people hadn't convinced me, you know, oh, it's going to go bankrupt and this and that, I would have just left it alone. But I had sold out. I got into options. I was going back and forth. And I ended up making still a lot of money in Tesla on this recent run up. I finally hit it pretty big on it. But if I had just bought the stock and stuck to my initial decision back in, 2000, in the 2011 to 2013 range, I would be worth three times more than I am today. Three times more. And I beat myself up about that because it would have been me just sitting on my butt versus how hard I worked. But you know what? I'm also very thankful for that failure because I'm not going to fail again. And that failure was letting somebody else cloud my inner voice. Letting somebody else put their, cast their fear and doubts. People are just naturally afraid. People are fearful. And they project that fear on other people. So you might be the person that says, I got a good idea. I believe in my idea. But if you bounce that off of somebody else, odds are most people are full of fear. And they project that fear on you to feel better about themselves. And they'll want you to be in that. That misery loves company is a very true thing. So if someone's trying to convince you not to do an idea that you have in your heart and you think is, this is going to be a good idea, I believe in this. Go for it. Go, not only go for it, go all in. Go 100% like it's the only option. There are no other options. Go 100% because you know what? You're probably going to fail. Yeah, you're probably going to fail. But you want to know something funny? You're going to learn so much from that. So much from that failure. And then you're going to get up and do the same strategy again. Go, well, I have a different idea or I'm changing that just a slight bit because it didn't work this way and I'm going all in again. And you're probably going to fail again. And then you're going to shift it up a little bit. Nope, I'm going all in again this time. And it's going to happen over and over and over and over. You're going to learn so much and that's where that saying fail forward comes from. You're going to learn so much in that process. And so that's the main thing I want to stress on the youth don't let people cloud your judgment. All the things that are happening today are so different and so unique. Technology is moving so rapidly on a daily basis that you would be foolish not to go 100% all in. If I could go back in time and be 18, I would have never stepped foot in a college. The only reason I'm happy I did is because I learned from going there that it wasn't for me. But if I could go back in time, I wouldn't have pursued those three years. I would have been an entrepreneur from the get-go and I would have rather failed multiple times at something and then gotten, I would be much further ahead than I am now, I think. Um, but then again, it's, it's so easy to, this is something I think Steve Jobs said, it's so easy to line the dots going backwards, but when you're going forwards, you, you don't see the dots. It's easy to align them when you're going back, you know, but when you're going forward, you're just hoping you're going in the right direction and you're hoping you're learning from those mistakes. And so the real thing that's just such a, it's such a disservice is to make these young children think that they can't fail. You can't fail. You got to go to college. You got to get straight A's. You got to do this. You got, no, you should be failing when you're that young because you're going to learn way more than any college professor can teach you from failure. <laughs> I, I had college professors that try to talk me out of my best ideas. You know, it's, it's. It's obvious that this is a subject that I have a chip on my shoulder about. It's obvious that um, I have a, an extreme bias here. And I don't mean to, I'm sure there are people watching this like, you don't know, bro. You don't know college. You don't get it. I, I got a, a scholarship and this and that. And, and God bless you if you did. If you got a full scholarship. You're not spending any money. But as a whole, look into how much student debt we're in. Look at how much college debt there is out there. It's, it's sad. And the fact that the law 
The fact that the people who are pulling the puppet strings made it so that you can't get out of that debt, it's the only debt you can't bankrupt out of, that's evil. There's things around that, and I'm sure there are the split case, there's some cases in there that are that everything worked out perfect, but I'm talking about the whole. I'm talking about the people like me who had to pay their way through it if they decided to go all the way through it. If I went forward with the four year, I was planning to go to USC. I was planning to go to either UCLA, USC, something like that. And I would probably still be in college debt today. I'd probably be on a completely different ride than I am now. And I've got to tell you, I got to tell you this. I love the current ride that I'm on. The current ride that I'm on, I am stoked to wake up every morning. I have full control of my day. I never clock out. Never clock out. I'm answering. I'm doing deals. This morning, I woke up at 6 a.m., did a deal for $4,200 on some silver. I mean, I, I'm buying stuff at midnight. I'm selling stuff at 1 in the morning, 2 in the morning. I'm, and I never clock out. I love what I do. I'm, I might be in my warehouse here at 2 o'clock in the morning doing the video like this. I don't clock in. I don't clock out. And I, I couldn't have it any other way. So I'm speaking to myself personally and to the fact that the college system isn't wrapped around how fast technology has evolved. If you're reading from a textbook, it's too late. The new information's chilling on YouTube and it's free. Anything you want to learn, anything you want to do in your life is readily at your disposal. And so it's a bit, it's a bit of um, a hard thing to throw a video like this out there because I'm sure there's going to be the back and forth. I'm specifically talking about the United States college system. I'm sure maybe other college systems are, are different, you know, but I'm specifically talking to the youth here about dropping out of college if you want to be an entrepreneur. I think I'm going to title this video something along the lines of uh, should I drop out entrepreneur talks or something like that. I'm speaking to that person, not the doctors, not the lawyers, not the people in other countries where the college might be free, etc., College is supposed to be free. It's supposed to be something. But the thing is, you don't even need a taxpayer to pay for your college. You can just go online. Go on YouTube. Look at you watching. If you watch this video all the way through, I'm sure there was a ton of information in this video that the average professor that might be teaching entrepreneurship that isn't actually an entrepreneur and is reading from a textbook. I'm sure there's things that I know about how many times I failed. And it's not about me being right. Or telling you like, oh, I know exactly how to do this. It's that I can tell you you're going to fail from experience. And I can, tell, I can tell you that you're going to eventually get hungry for failure. And you're going to have an appetite for it. It's like when you've been working out and you start getting an appetite. And you're like, you know what? I'm building muscle, man. I, I, my body, I feel it. And if you work out a lot, you all of a sudden you feel like, I, I want a steak. And I want to drink more water. And I want this. And you just start craving it. That's how it becomes as an entrepreneur. You're going to fail and you're going to be like, oh man, I got me that time. I'm going to go, I'm doing it again. I'm going to fail again. I'm going to fail again. It's going to happen. And I can share those kind of insights. And this is just a YouTube video that's completely for free, which is why you should click that subscribe button down there in the bell afterwards to be notified of all future videos. <laughs> and if this video did provide you value, please smash that like button. Um, yeah, a bit of a rant, bit of a tangent. I'm posting it anyway. Someone called me in the middle of this video and all this different stuff, but I don't like editing my videos. That's kind of why I do that um, that uh, hourglass or whatever, because then you kind of know if it's just started that I, there wasn't any editing going on or anything. It was just a one shot video. I like to keep it real with everybody. Thanks so much for watching. I'm going to sign out. That's the video. See you later.